Okay, we're on page eight. eight. First, we're going to talk about some products of uh, dot products, and uh, they're very similar to uh, multiplication. So you can only do dot products between two vectors. Uh, so the first thing is, if you're taking two vectors and you're dotting them together, then you can actually do them um, the opposite direction. So u dot v is the same as v dot u. It is commutative. So the order that you multiply them does not matter. The second thing, u dot u. If a vector dotting itself is actually going to be the magnitude squared. So it's a special property. If you take a, pro a vector, Dotting itself, it's the same as the magnitude squared. Next, the zero vector. Zero uh, is just a dot, but actually we can think of it as a vector. So zero dot v is actually going to get you zero. And that zero is a scalar, not a vector. OK, the next thing. If you have um, a vector dotting the sum or the resultant of two vectors, you can think of it as if it's a distributed property. So you can kind of do this. So it's the same as u dot v plus u dot w. And having that vector at the end doesn't matter because we already said that uh, dot product is a commutative property. So you can switch the directions. So you can actually have it distribute backwards as well. So you can say this is u dot w plus v dot w. And then the last property. If you have a scalar multiplied to a vector, dotting another vector, that scalar can change location as well. Um, you can actually write it as u dot, and then take that uh, scalar and multiply by the vector first. And that's OK. So just some properties of dot product. And remember, dot product is you multiply the two components together, and then you add. A lot of you multiply together, and then you just left it as a vector. That's not correct. You got to add them together. OK, so you probably did this last night. Um, what is the dot product if, uh, hmm? oh, OK, I think I have this question now. So if you have a dot product, OK, if you have a dot product, so let's say u dot v. u dot v, remember, is magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta. Let's say that you do a dot product and the number is 0. What does that mean about the angle in between? 90 degrees. And why is that? Because if this is 0, then this angle must be 90 because cosine 90 degrees is 0. That's the only way you're going to get 0 when angle is 90. Yes? So then you can, you can do the same thing. If the angle in between is 90, then the dot product is 0. Yes? Why not 270? That is a great question. All right, so when we're talking about two vectors like this, you have a u vector, you have a v vector. The question is, which one is the angle? This one or this one, right? Uh, in general, we use the smaller angle because if you have any two vectors that, that look like a 90 degrees, but if you have any two vectors, you always have two angles. Is it this one or is it this one? So we take the one that's less than uh, 180 because um, because the cosine function, remember the inverse cosine function is between 0 to 180, so we just use that number. Good question. Um, so what you want to remember is this word orthogonal. Orthogonal is a way of saying perpendicular. So we, uh, I think we only use this word in a vector world, so perpendicular. <coughs> orthogonal means perpendicular. So make sure you remember that word. If I ask you which, which vector is orthogonal to this one, I'm asking you which vector is perpendicular to this one. All right, so when the two vectors are orthogonal to each other, 
the dot product should be zero. All right, so the next question. Figure out if u and v are orthogonal. What should you do? Hmm? Okay, u dot v, and what are you looking for? How do you know if it's orthogonal or not? Yeah, you, you, huh? No, okay. Is it, okay, if it's zero, right? So if it's, if it's zero, it's orthogonal. If it's not zero, it's not orthogonal. Yes? Okay, can you do the dot product in your head really fast? Is it orthogonal? Are they orthogonal? Yes, so our dot product is zero. All right, the next one. This is the hard one of the day. This is, um, this is I'm gonna try my best to make sure it's not confusing. Okay, so we're gonna have two vectors again. And this time, okay, so u and v. This time, what I'm gonna do is ask myself, how much is one vector going in the other vector's direction? Okay, so there's an angle in between like this. So what I'm doing is asking myself, I have two vectors. Uh, one of them is going kind of towards the higher direction. The, one, the other one's a little lower. I'm saying how much of the higher one is actually going in this other one's direction? <laughs> um, okay, so let me kind of show you. Mm, let's do a easier one. Let's say that one of them is the x-axis and the other one is slanted. Let's make it a little shorter. So this is kind of the x-axis one, x-axis direction. And then this one, let's say, is v. So my question is, how much of v is going in the x-direction? How much of v is going in the x-direction? All, All of it? Not all of it, uh, okay. So this will make a lot of sense if you're taking physics, but if you're not taking physics, it's kind of like, I don't know what's going on, so how many people are taking physics right now? Let me kind of, okay, only two people. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit confusing. So how much of V is going in the X direction? What we do is we draw a straight line down to the X axis and we make a perpendicular angle or a 90 degree angle. And then what's happening is I'm gonna break this vector V down into two components again. So just like before, we have the X component and we have the Y component. So one goes here and then one goes here. So the question is how much of V is going in the X direction? Does that make sense? Uh, all right, I'm gonna try one more way. So this is what our professor in college showed us. It was very confusing when I heard it at first, but I think now that I think about it, oh, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's say this is the vector, this ruler is the vector. And I'm saying how much of this ruler is going in the X direction, that's very confusing. Basically, he said, it's like if you shine a flashlight from the top straight down, the question is, where is the shadow? Does that make sense? If you shine the light straight down, can you imagine that? This shine the light straight down, it's gonna hit this uh, ruler and then it's gonna cast a shadow on the floor. And the shadow is only as long as this part, right? There's no more shadow here. So then the projection vector is the shadow. Does that make sense? <sighs> okay, let's finish this and then um, I'm gonna show you like the physics part of it. Okay, so in the same idea, but this time we don't have a vector and the x-axis. We have two vectors and they're both kind of tilted. So the question is how much is u going in the v direction? v is not parallel or parallel to the x-axis. It's just kind of tilted. So what we're gonna do, the same thing as before, we're gonna draw a perpendicular line down to the v vector and then you know draw like a perpendicular 
90 degrees. The question is how much is you going, how much of you is going in the V direction that is this much? Okay, now the hard part. What is that vector? Okay, so this is where the proof comes. So, and this is where your extra credit comes. So I'm gonna show you how to do the proof right now. If you can do it the same back, then I will give you one extra credit point for your test. Um, but it needs a few things. First, you gotta show me a diagram. So I'm gonna show you a diagram right now, but you gotta draw it as well. And then you gotta demonstrate, like you gotta show me how to derive the formula as well. Um, you have to do it in 10 minutes or less. And you gotta schedule it with me. You can't just come in and say, I'm ready, and uh, I might not be ready. So please sign up first. Um, the last thing to do it is the test date. Um, anyways, and this is how I'm gonna grade you based on you know, if you know what you're doing. At the end, I'm gonna ask you a few questions to make sure that you're not just memorizing some script. Uh, you actually know what you're saying. And then if you can pass my questions, then I will give you the credit. Okay, all right. So the projection vector. So the projection of U vector going in the V direction. Okay, so see how the way I write this? U vector is kind of like the big uh, U here. V is the subscript. So the subscript is the direction you're going. The subscript is the direction you're going. I'm taking this u vector and breaking it down to the v component. v is going this direction. All right, let's think about it. What are the two things that make up a vector? Magnitude and direction. Okay, so the projection vector u onto v has two things, magnitude and direction. Okay, so magnitude and direction of this projection or projected vector, what is the magnitude of this vector? It has to do with u, right? So remember yesterday we broke down the u vector into two parts like this, uh, two parts. The x direction is the direction of v, right? So then how long is that part? Uh, okay, all right, let's try this one. Let's say this, there's an angle here. How long is this part? Still no idea. Okay, uh, this part. How long is this part? Okay, I think you guys all need to look at your notes. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Look at your notes with your partner and tell me how long this part is. Okay, so this part is magnitude V cosine, right? And then we said the Y direction is how long? Yeah, magnitude v sine, right? So let's take the same idea, except we're going to apply it to two vectors. Okay, anytime I break down a vector into x and y direction, the x direction is always cosine, the y direction is always sine. And if we wanna know how long, we take that length and then just multiply by cosine, take that length and multiply by sine. So same idea here. How long is this part. If you can't see it, just make it, uh, like make uh, the V vector as if it's parallel to the ground. And then just kind of look at it and say, how long is that part? The blue part. Magnitude what? Magnitude of U, U. Because U vector is the one that's breaking down. Okay, there are two things. We need a magnitude and a direction. Magnitude comes from the u vector. Direction comes from the v vector. Because we want u to go in the v direction. 
Okay. All right, let's try to get there together. Okay, so the magnitude is going to be the u vector going in the v direction, and that is uh, magnitude of u cosine theta. Next thing, what direction? Which direction am I going? We're going the v direction. So then we would multiply by the v vector. Except the v vector itself has a magnitude, right? It has a length. If I multiply by this magnitude plus times this, mag uh, this vector that has a magnitude, it's going to be very long. So how do I reduce the v vector down to just one unit long so then it only has a magnitude of one that keeps its direction? No. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Let me try again. Uh, let's try. The unit yes, the unit vector. But <laughs> let's try again. Uh, I really need you guys to understand this. Okay, so do you guys understand where the projection vector is? Okay, do you understand why it has to be that much on V? Like how I drew it? Yes, more or less. Okay, so this is going to be the projective vector because it's how much of U is going in the V direction. Okay, this much. I need to create this vector. To create this vector, I need two things, magnitude and direction. So first, magnitude. Magnitude is how long. How long is it? Well, how long it is depends on U. It's how much of U is going in this direction. That is U cosine theta. That's just how we break down a vector in its component form. Okay, that's magnitude. The second thing is I need a direction. Which direction? The V direction. So then I will multiply by V. Except V by itself has a length. So then if I multiply a magnitude, which is length, times another vector that has a direction and a length, it's going to be very, very long. So I cannot do that. I want to go in the V direction, but not make it this long. Therefore, I need to make it into a unit vector. OK, magnitude is how long. Direction is where. This long, and that depends on u. This direction depends on v, but v, I don't want to keep its magnitude. I want to get it down to its unit vector, which says just one unit long. OK. Now, the proof part. We're going to utilize the dot product. Dot product is u dot v equals magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta. So what I want to do now is I am going to, I'm going to somehow um, replace, um, let's see, this whole thing by something here. Okay, so I'm going to do some substitution. Magnitude of u cosine theta is found in the dot product. But there is an extra magnitude of v here. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to divide by magnitude of v. This will give me u dot v over magnitude of v equals u magnitude of u cosine theta. And then what I'm going to do now is substitute. Magnitude of u cosine theta is from the dot product is going to substitute in. This becomes u dot v over magnitude of v times vector v over magnitude of v. And then I'm going to group together all the scalar parts away from the vector part. So this is where you have to um, know which part is going to give you a scalar, which part is going to give you a vector. Dot product, is dot product going to, dot product going to generate a scalar or a vector? Scalar. 
dot product gives you a number, not a vector. So this is why I need you to think about it. That's that way you won't have this kind of problem on the warm up where it says dot product, but you end up with a vector. Okay, so that's gonna be a scalar. This is a scalar because it's a magnitude. This is another scalar because it's a magnitude. So I'm gonna combine all those parts together and this becomes u dot v over magnitude of v squared and that vector v is by itself. And this is the formula for projection of u onto v. Okay, the projection of u going in the v direction, so projection vector of u going in the v direction is u dot v over projection, I'm sorry, uh, magnitude of v squared times v. So you have to memorize that formula. Um, how should you memorize this formula? Let's kind of look at a few things about this. First, you have u dot v. That's kind of general. And uh, it doesn't matter which direction you multiply because uh, its property is it's gonna be the same. This is u going in the v direction. So v direction is what we care about. And notice how there are more v's than u's. Okay, so hopefully that will help you memorize it. Yes? And so u is always gonna be on the top and v is always gonna be on the bottom? No, not always. It depends on the question. So they might say, I want a projection of V going in the U direction, then you need to change the formula yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes? Is the V by itself, is that a scalar or a vector? That's a vector. Oops. Yeah. Okay, let me try one more time. So, projection vector of one vector going in the other vector's direction. So, first you have two vectors. Then you draw a perpendicular line down to where you're going. The amount in the x direction is going to be the magnitude. And that magnitude depends on where that uh, projected vector is. So it's going to be magnitude of that cosine theta, because it's the, basically the x direction. OK, every vector needs two things, magnitude and direction. So that takes care of the magnitude. The direction has to be in the v direction, but not as long only one unit long. So you multiply those together. So technically you're done, but not you don't always have an angle to play with, so you got to use the dot product to get rid of the angle. And so you manipulate the dot product so that you can substitute, get rid of this part, and then substitute that in, and when you simplify, you get this final thing, which is the projective vector. All right, after all that, let's go ahead and um, do some practice. Okay, so let's look at this question. Find the vector projection of u onto v, then write u as the sum of two orthogonal vectors, one of which is projection of u onto v. All right, let's do one thing at a time. Let's just find the projection vector. So we want the projection vector of u going in the v direction u going in the v direction. So let's kind of remember the formula. First, we have the dot product. Then it's divided by which one? Magnitude of v squared, and then times v. All right, so the calculation part is not that hard. You just kind of plug everything in. All right, u is 6, 2 dot v, which is 5, negative 5, divided by the magnitude of v squared. So magnitude of v is 5 squared plus negative 5 squared, and then the whole thing squared. Finally, that whole thing is going to generate a number, okay? That's the scalar part. And then the last thing is we're going to multiply by the vector v. Okay. What is u dot v? Can you do that in your head? 20. 20. All right. <clears throat> Divided by magnitude of v squared. Magnitude of v squared, well, we, magnitude is square rooting it. And then we square root, square root it again, or square it again. So technically, that square root is uh, non-essential. 
right? So we only care about the radicand. So what is the result of the radicand? 50. All right. And then multiply by 5, negative 5. So this gives us the vector 2, negative 2. So what they're saying is that the, the projective vector is 2, negative 2. Right? I, I, th I think I did it right. So this cancels 2 fifth, and 2 fifth times 5 is 2. Okay, let's go ahead and see this graphically. Okay, we have two vectors. U, that is 6, 2. And V is 5, negative 5. The question is, how much of u is going in the v direction? What do we need to do first? <clears throat> how much of u is going in the v direction? What do we need to do first to find where the projective vector is graphically? You need to draw <laughs> right triangle, yes, from u to v. And then this one is the projective vector. Projection of u in the v direction. From our calculation, it says the projective vector is 2, negative 2. So does it look like 2, negative 2? Yes. So that's correct. So our calculation is correct and does match with our diagram that the projective vector is that much. So if you kind of use the analogy of um, shining a light, basically I'm shining a flashlight here, and this is how much the shadow is. Okay? All right. The second part of this uh, question is a little trickier to understand. So the second part says, write, uh, I'm going to leave this up and I'll just read it to you. Write u as the sum of two orthogonal vectors one of which is projection of u onto v. Okay, so let's kind of break this down. Write u as the sum. Sum means what? Addition. Addition. So we're going to add two vectors together. Two, what kind of vectors? Orthogonal, Orthogonal means perpendicular. perpendicular. So we need two perpendicular vectors that adds up to be u. One of which is the projection vector. All right, so they, they're saying that I want this vector u to be the sum of two vectors. And those two vectors are perpendicular. One of them is this one. So you have to add another one to get to u. And maybe it's not clear, maybe it is clear. So basically the other vector is this one because they're the only two that's orthogonal. and you got to recall the first day when we added them graphically. Tail to head method. So this one is pointing this way. This one has to point this way so that when you add them together, you get this resulting vector. The tail to head. So the tail to this head and then the tail to this head. <sighs> okay. Hmm. Okay, all right, let's try something else. If I have two vectors like this, let's say this is u, this is v, where is u plus v? This one. Okay, if you don't remember, you gotta review the, the first day's notes. So graphically, one's going this way, one's going this way, the result is tail to head. Okay, so. We have two vectors, this one plus something. Let's call it W. This one plus W is going to give me U. And we need to figure out what W is. It's a little bit tricky. So here's an easy way. We know that the projection vector plus this vector we don't know 
it's going to give me the u vector. Well, what is the coordinate or what is the projection vector component form? You just solved it. 2 negative 2. We don't know what w is. What is the u vector? Six two. Okay. W vector is six two minus two negative two. That is four four. So the W vector must be pointing at four four. So if you look at this W vector and you ask yourself, does it look like it's pointing towards four four? Yes, it does. If you were able to move that vector around and have it start at 0, 0, it would point towards 4, 4. OK, let's try another one. And then we'll probably be done for the day. OK, let me try to answer any questions. Do you have any questions? Yes. No, when a dot product would be equal to zero. You can actually check uh, 2 negative 2 dot 4 4 would it be zero? Yeah, so they are orthogonal. Any other questions or you're like, I'm so confused, I don't know what to ask. That happens too. But, mm, okay, let's do a few practices and then if you have questions, let me know. Um, okay, again, this is kind of the same thing. Um, projection of u onto v, then write it as a sum of two orthogonal vectors, one of which is projection of u onto v. All right, so let's just have you do one thing at a time, projection of u onto v. So find a projection vector. Let me know when you're done. The projected vector is 24 over 13 comma negative 36 over 13. And then what you would do is take that projection vector plus some w vector is equal to the u vector. And you got to figure out what w is. So go ahead and do that if you haven't done it yet. The w vector is 15 over 13 comma 10, 13.